Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode I want to revisit this uh, GNU pure and GNU const function attributes that I talked about several episodes back and there is uh, a lot to like about them but you definitely have to be careful with them and I will explain with a demonstration here. Now, just uh, for the record so that we all are on the same page, the point is that you can tell the compiler that this function has no external side effects. And there's two different ways of doing this. There's pure and there's const. And they have um, different levels of requirements for what you're telling the compiler as far as how much this function is allowed to interact with its outside environment. But we're just going to go ahead and create a simple struct. And it's going to have a value. Something like this. We're going to increment the value and return the previous version of it. Oh, no, we're pre-incrementing. We're going to increment the value and return the new version of it. So let's just create uh, a simple object of type s here. And we're going to return s.i. So we expect that's going to return s.bell. We're going to expect that that will return 0 and it does, it returns zero. And you might notice I have optimization level one turned on at the moment. Now I'm gonna call increment value. And you would expect that this is going to now return one, that's correct, I'm going to increment it again, it's going to return two, and so on. So even at optimization level one, this all just basically goes away. What happens if I apply this pure function attribute here, like this, this is what it looks like we're now getting zero returned from main. Because we've told the compiler this member function increment value, it's not going to be able to change any global state. So the compiler is free to assume, well, since it can't change any global state, it's impossible for it to have changed val. Therefore, the answer is zero. So lest you think that this is just the optimizer doing something goofy, I will take it back to optimization level zero here, and you can see at no point does it actually call this function increment value. And in fact, if we were to do something like this, where we move the function body, and this is the kind of trick that we often use when we're, well, trick is a strong word, it's is the kind of technique that I often use when I'm working with Compiler Explorer specifically to say, uh, yeah, there's a thing here that you won't be able to optimize. So just, you know, do what you would normally do. And this was a 0, and it's not calling that function at all. So we'll take it back one more level, and we'll remove this uh, function pure attribute here. And we can see that it does, in fact, call the function twice, as you would expect it to. And we can get other interesting results here. So I could say, let i be the first value, and then have i plus equal this, and then return this s.val here. And now remember, I still don't have a function body in here, but we know, because this is not a const member function, that it can manipulate the state of the object. So I'm going to turn on optimizations, 02, let's see, let's do 03. All right. So it's calling increment value, it's adding that value in, it's calling increment value again, it's moving the result into EAX, whatever. So this is how it's going to work to return the value of doing these things. So I'll put this pure function attribute on again and see that zero is returned. Zero. Well, it's saying, well, it couldn't have possibly have manipulated that dot val. So let's say, okay, let's return i, because some integer was returned to us twice here. And we can see that it calls increment value, and then it adds it to itself, effectively doubling the value. So it's done exactly what we told it to do. So you definitely need to be careful if you find yourself utilizing these pure and const function attributes that I talked about in a previous episode. Make sure you're using it correctly. This is uh, a, a, a contract that the compiler is not uh, warning you about at all, but it is taking it very seriously. And 
you don't even necessarily have to have optimizations turned on at all in some cases to get, shall we say, unexpected behavior. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe.